Lyon is really breaking new ground. If we're going to get to right care, we got to pull the right people together and have the right conversations. So I feel like it's an organization that's beginning to drive the right conversations. So the theme of my comments today is really about this journey to discover what is right care uh, and what is good care in the city of Camden. Uh, to give you a little bit of perspective, in Camden, uh, we're a city of 79,000 people. We're right across from Philadelphia, separated by the Delaware River. We're in New Jersey. Uh, it's the first, second, or third poorest city in the country, and one of the most dangerous cities in the country as well. When I first arrived there, I thought I had found a, um, uh, an, uh, an outbreak of a rare disease cluster. And I had all of these patients coming in who were, they, had, they were round in the middle, they had a moon face, they were kind of hunched over, they had what's called a buffalo hump, which is a fat pad on the back of their neck, they had lots of stretch marks on their belly, they looked much older than their stated age, and everyone was um, sort of normal in their test. And it started to dawn on me that I was taking care of incredibly stressed out people. And they hadn't just been stressed out for a day or a week or a month, but for years and years and years. That I couldn't tell how old people were. That there were folks, you know, I'd have to ask them their age. None of the visual cues for age made any sense. People were wearing out way earlier than they were supposed to wear out that they had profound levels of chronic stress in their life, and they were living in a very stressful place. So I pretty quickly learned that if there is right care, right care is really about ameliorating the effects of stress. I began to imagine my office as a giant spring, and I had people in really desperate straits and profound moments, and that my job was really to just listen, to engage, uh, understand, uh, and patch them back together, and as best as I could, get them on their way. Uh, every day I've got people coming in, tears streaming down their face, telling me horrible stories about the police department planting evidence them, on them, beating them and their family members. And I got uh, absolutely obsessed with the police department and with city government. And that's not a good thing in Camden to be obsessed with. In my office and in all of our offices, we're seeing a lot of people come in as victims of violence. And people weren't reporting their crimes to the police because they told me the police won't investigate, they won't do anything. Uh, I felt like the administrative data, the billing data that sits inside of the hospitals could actually be a much better count of the rate of violence in the city. So from that we learned that uh, for young people, one in 19 were injured badly enough to come to the emergency room. That's a staggering rate of violence in a community. We learned that the leading cause of emergency room visits was head colds and we the public paid through Medicaid and Medicare $1.5 million dollars in payments for the care of head colds and emergency rooms. I mean, that would open up five of my offices. So the, the power of the data set really lets you ask the question, where is the public spending its money on healthcare, and is it spending money in the right places? My response to this data set was to do community organizing. And my community was grumpy primary care docs who have failing primary care offices. And that's, that's my tribe. We formed the Camden Coalition of Health Providers because each of us were having huge challenges running our offices. And uh, it really felt empowering for all of us to come together, share the struggles, and begin to form a common agenda. What could we do together that we couldn't do separately? We were like, we're going to run out in the community and fix this problem. So I originally thought it was a problem of navigation, coordination, engagement, accompaniment, and education fixes it for a small segment of folks where that's really the barrier. If you're homeless, and about 25% of our patients are homeless, nothing we do works. So if you're living on a park bench and you've got heart failure, navigating you and coordinating your care is not gonna work. You've really gotta get into the right kind of housing. So we, we stopped everything inside of our organization, got 50 Section 8 vouchers from the state of New Jersey, raised 750,000 in earmarks and wraparound dollars, and we are moving the most complicated people I've ever met, medically complicated with an active addiction, mental health issues, moving them into brand new apartments with tons of wraparound. That's been the, that's the closest I've ever gotten to right care in my full 17 years in Camden. Let me, let me close by saying that um, I still don't know what right care is. I'm getting closer to it, and right care is something about care and about attachment, about the impact of trauma in people's lives, about how we interact with each other as health professionals, and how we construct our systems. And uh, I'll let you know when I figure it out, and I hope, 
Um, I, I hope in my lifetime we see us all figure this out. Yeah, thanks. <laughs>